Hey guys, you're listening to the Your Party People podcast. This is Lexi Tran, owner of Ivory and Fern, a Midwest-based photographer. And this is Katie Murphy, owner of Jane Ray Events, your Midwest wedding planner. We're here to give you couples a guide on how to maneuver one of the best days of their lives and how to keep it from being one of the worst. Welcome to the party. Woo woo! Hi guys, it's your party people. We are back this week to give you some great tips again. And just to review, last week we talked about how to celebrate in 2021 when you got married in 2020. This week we are going to give you some tips on how to navigate through the week of your wedding and those week of wedding sweats we're calling them today. So bad, they're so bad. Yes, (laughs) yes, they're so bad. But before we jump in, it is National Dive Bar Day. Yes. Yes, and the Lexi, what is it? The signature drink for dive bar? I can't remember like the actual. Like, it's I don't know if the drink has like its own name, but it's seven and seven seagrams, crown and seven up, which is, and this is true, what we are literally drinking right now. Yes, and let me tell you, it's Cheers. scary smooth, like scary smooth. Like this is a drink you sip and you're like, oh no. <laughs> That's where this is going. So we're just going to have a couple sips throughout the episode and that's it. Yes. Just so we feel like we delivered this, these tips to you, right? So go get your Seagrams and your 7-Up. Have a nice glass. Yeah. 7 and 7. It's real sweet. You'll like it. (laughs) (laughs) If anybody gets that bridesmaid uh, (laughs) reference. Yeah. Uh, So, Lexi, you want to tell us a little about your week yeah. wedding sweats that you yeah. had at your wedding so we were really proactive and good about like all our vendor payments and things like that but we did not account for all of the tiny expenses that come up literally that last week so like Tommy and I literally scrambled like I think that Monday or Tuesday before our wedding and like tried to like take out credit cards and like actually ended up taking out a thousand dollar loan personal loan um because we didn't account for like mm. lunch for our parties like that's like 200, 300 bucks, like after you buy everything for it and on both sides. And then we weren't thinking about like the gifts that we wanted to get our moms or like, you know, tiny little fees, like parking fees or last minute appointments that we wanted. Like Tommy needed a haircut. We didn't account for that. Like all those things that you like don't think of. So it was honestly so stressful because then we had to switch everything. We're like, okay, We'll put all our final vendor payments like on these cards and then the cash that we had ready, we're just going to use that for all this last minute stuff. And so my only tip would literally be put away like a thousand to $1,200 and don't touch it until like the last month of your wedding and look at it and say, okay, what random things am I going to have to pay for? Because yeah. holy cow, it was a nightmare. Yeah. Take, take it from us, learn from us. And so, because I'm going to be honest, guys, the week of the wedding, it's going to be stressful no matter what family's coming in town, these little things add up. So my biggest advice from my experience would be get all those little things knocked out as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Just don't procrastinate because leave room for the things that are going to come up. Right. Like for mine, I had my wedding ceremony outside at my um, dad's like I don't want to say acreage, but it's like he lives out in the country. So it was kind of out in a field and it is close to the river. And there is such thing as a 500 year flood line. That's a thing. And it happened to me. It's when the river floods so much that it's at a point where you rarely see it hit to that point. So our ceremony area was completely submerged underwater on Wednesday. We were getting married Saturday. And then Thursday morning, it was a swamp. Thursday, it was just a swampland. Um, but, you know, Friday for the rehearsal and for the wedding, it was dried up. But just caused that oh. stress on top of all the little things, you know, that come up. So that was... Oh, I can't. Oh I only gosh. cried, you know, <laughs> as seven times that Wednesday or I don't know how many. But I had a solid <laughs> cry myself to sleep with a bottle of wine and that was about <laughs> all I did. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's it's going to come up. But we're here to give you some tips to navigate through. And just to decrease those, the wedding, the week of wedding day sweats and decrease the stress level a little bit. The first tip, I mentioned it a little bit, but just to get, if you take anything from this, don't procrastinate. Yeah, don't, don't wait, just do it. Mm-hmm. Get those, anything you can get done before the week or two weeks before, knock it out, 
have it packed away. Pick out your guest book, how you're going to do that. Pick out your unity, have that set aside because there are little things that come up in the week that you just need to leave room for. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely huge thing. Yes. And I just want to say like, this stress is unavoidable. Mm -hmm. This episode is really just to give you guys ways to push through the stress. Like, we're not telling you to do these things and it will get rid of your stress. It will still happen because they're just natural things that pop up during your timeline right before your wedding. This is just to help you, one, cope <laughs> and two, find the best way to get through it. Yes. Not to like completely scratch it out because that's near impossible. Right. We're here to be real with you. Yes. You're yeah. going to be real. Super real. Um, so our second tip is test drive everything. So, like, we'll talk about this in a later episode, like, your dress appointments and things like that. However, if you have your shoes locked down, wear them around the house. Wear them while you clean. Wear them while you do the dishes. Wear them while you cook, while you make your bed. Like, anything you can do, wear them out on a date night. Get those scuffs on the bottom because if they're brand new, they're going to be slippery. They're going to be uncomfortable. Same thing with, like, dresses. Assign that to somebody. Hey, can you see my dress the night before and then touch it up in the morning? Make sure you, that's what your personal attendants are for. Let's not get confused with that. They're, they're your friends and you love them and you want them to be part of your right. day. A personal attendant does have a job. And that's what you ask them to do is to do those simple tasks that you and your bridesmaids don't necessarily have time for in the morning. Yeah. And just to put on your full look. So when you do it on the morning of, you feel confident. I've yep. done this before. I'm ready for this. I know yes. the feels, all the, you know, Absolutely. how everything feels and looks. Yep. And then um, make sure your rings are clean. Just take them in. Most of the time, wherever you buy your ring, the cleaning should be free mm -hmm. for like a, a simple clean. So you should be able to go anywhere and just get it nice and cleaned up. Make sure she's extra shiny, sparkly, <laughs> feeling good. Like you want to put that thing on and be blind. Like that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. make sure she's clean and that his ring is clean too. Um, and then go get your nails done. Self-care is important and we'll talk about that. But go get your fingernails and your toenails did because... We all like to feel good and you feel for some reason a thousand times better when yeah. that's all done and cohesive. More polished yes. something. Our third tip is check in with each vendor the week of. And honestly, this is something that you have to do the week of. You can't do it before. I mean, you can, but it's better to do it the week of because there are all these little changes that tend to happen. So check in with them. Make sure your final payment is done. If you, If all your vendors allow it, Try to be paid in full before the day. Sometimes, Absolutely. sometimes vendors ask to be paid day of, and that's okay. Just make sure you hand it off to somebody because you don't want to be messing with where's that envelope with that three thousand dollar check for something. Oh my you gosh. know, so just paid in full. It'll relieve the stress for the day, and that's something to do the week of or even two weeks before. Right, and another thing too is always ask your vendors about payment plan options, like. Tommy and I, whenever we have a contract, obviously this goes vendor to vendor. Everyone runs their business differently. But Tommy and I always have the full bill due a month before. However, you can make payments at any time. So if you feel like, oh, I've got an extra 50 bucks this month. Hey, Tommy, Lexi, can you invoice me that so I can pay that? At, sometimes vendors are more than likely flexible on those things. And we'll just take payments whenever it works for you. And I feel like people don't think about that. They think like, oh my gosh, I got to drop $1,500 right. in a month. Like right. if you ask more than likely they will be flexible. So don't be afraid to ask that question. Yeah. Good point, Lexi. Great point. And one vendor that you don't really think of to check in with on the week of is your hotel block. Yeah. <laughs> and to see, cause usually if your guests book so many rooms, you get a upgrade oh, for the night of your wedding. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So check in with them to see if you're at that point of that many bookings and then you get to up grade to like the presidential suite or wow. something like okay. that well seriously someone needs to do that like tiktok hack or something because wow that, yeah no i don't i didn't even know that yeah good well tip. well all right our fourth tip pack it all up pack it up the night before just like you were to go on a trip or do anything this is a full day where you are literally doing not connected to your phone not connected to people like pack up the night before like you're moving out <laughs> put it all in boxes <laughs> Put everything in an organized fashion. That way you're not scattered in the morning. You want your morning to be relaxed mm -hmm. and calm and know that everyone has what they need. Everyone's job is in place. You know, have all your gifts in order. Like I did gifts for my girls. I line them up the night before. We got ready at my house. So that was 
nice. convenient. Mm-hmm. But I literally lined up all the gifts on the table the night before everyone got there because I didn't want to have to worry about running around finding them. And, you know, during the rehearsal, make sure that, you know, everyone's aware, run through the timeline, just run it through, you know, you already are there to practice a ceremony. So just run it through the whole day together. Hey girls, this is this call time. I had a small football team, actually a large football team for a wedding party. (laughs) And we had like a makeup and hair schedule. So I went through that and actually some girls switched um, time slots and things like that at the rehearsal dinner because it worked better for them. If we had not done that, I don't know because some of my friends probably would have been late and missed their slot. (laughs) So (laughs) just run it all back. Run it all back. Make sure you're packed. Yep, absolutely. And just give them the highlights. At least tell them on the day, hair and makeup, yes. But say, be ready at this time for pictures. This is the ceremony time. After that, they're going to figure it out because they're along for the ride anyways. Yep. So, But those are the two big times yep. to tell your wedding party. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Before we go into the next tip, we are going to check in with our girl, Ashley Anderson, with This or That. And we'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Ashley with This or That, and today we're talking about fresh floral versus silk floral. I think a common misconception is that always silk is going to be more cost effective than fresh, and that's just simply not the case. So if you're working with a local rental company who offers silk floral arrangements, typically that is a more cost effective way to get a little more bang for your buck. So it's a great way to incorporate into your centerpieces and arch garlands a heavier floral presence than you would maybe be able to afford if you went all fresh. However, if that's not an option and you're planning on going out and purchasing silk for yourself, it will be more expensive than typically getting all fresh through your local florist. So I would encourage you to price check and get some quotes and you will be probably pleasantly surprised at the amount of floral that you can afford. And greenery goes a long way too, right? So you can get a good amount of fresh greenery and a really simple and clean look for your ceremony and reception that doesn't make you go over your floral budget. So those are some things to consider when thinking about fresh versus silk. Hi guys, we are back. Thank you, Ashley, again for a great tip with this or that. Uh, Back to our tips now, melting away those week of wedding Stress. Push them out the door. Sweats. <laughs> Long title. Stress and sweats pretty much is what I want to get across. <laughs> <laughs> They're all correlated. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, fifth, the fifth tip we have for you guys is check in with your mental self. Oh, my gosh. It sounds so obvious, sounds kind of cheesy, and it is so true. I mean, drink, drink the water, drink tons of water, schedule I mean, if you are a stressed out person, schedule a massage for some time in the week. Just mm-hmm. just for you, away from even all your all your girls, it's a good time to just be there just with your thoughts and kind of escape everything for a little bit. And drinking all that water, it'll help you not feel like bloated. Right. You know, yep. and mm-hmm. just it'll water makes everybody feel better. So Absolutely. just keep it in mind and checking in with yourself and just Honestly, if I could tell my younger Katie, you know, it was, I was 23. Yes, I was 23. um, And I'm 30 now. Woo. 30 club. And just remind yourself, like you are getting married and you're marrying your best friend. And that's, that's what's going to happen. And that's the highlight of the day. Everything else is all the extra, which it's, and I know we're a part of making that extra, but it's true. Just take a deep breath and you hired people to follow through and do what you need them to do. And your loved ones are there to help you through it. Just take a breath. Yeah. It's so easy to get lost in like the things that you're paying for, for the day of. It's mm-hmm. so easy to forget like the actual reason you're doing the day. And it's so like, let's be real. It's so easy. Our, everyone's first initial thought is to put yourself on the back burner. The majority of people will always put themselves last. And with such a big event like this, you have to put yourself first. Yes. There's just, there's no way because if you can't put yourself first, you're not your best version of yourself for your spouse. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, then your whole day is going to be off. And so all of your favorite things, even if you don't want to go do a bunch of extra things and pay for a bunch of extra things, like what is your ideal night to take for yourself? Like go to Target and get some bath bombs and oh, some yeah. salts and just like relax at home. Like, It doesn't have to, like, I'm all for massage. I'll pay for a massage. But if that's not your jam, like, 
just do your typical night. Yes. If you had a night to yourself, what would it be? Because what's your, yours, Lexi? Um, that's hard. <laughs> uh, junk food. I'll tell you. Really okay, bad. so junk mine food. is mine's Papa John's <laughs> and um, the Office. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. If you put fried chicken in front of me anywhere at any time <laughs> of the day, I will devour it. So probably like some fried chicken and candy and like a solid scary movie. I watch a lot oh. of true crime documentaries, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And so that's probably what you would catch me doing, like not moving all day, just like sitting there eating yeah. and watching things all day. Yeah, that's that's a happy place for sure. Oh, and yeah. then, you know, drink water just yeah. to counteract just, that. Yeah, just, <laughs> you know, you're supposed to be drinking water anyway just to be healthy. It should already be a habit, but let's be yeah. honest. How many of us are actually going to drink water? I mean, mm -hmm. th this could be water, but it's not. So. No, it's not. <laughs> it's seven and seven. Oh Real sweet. Oh, my gosh. Well, our, so our uh, next tip. Yeah. Yes, our sixth tip. Uh, give all those jobs away. We talked about Enneagrams prior. If you haven't listened to that episode, go listen to it because this tip is for everybody. I don't care what your Enneagram is. It is mm -hmm. so easy to take on things yourself and – think you can do everything on your own. Um, make sure that the people that you gave jobs to literally agreed to do that job. So you're not asking a lot by saying, hey, host and hostess, will you take all these gifts and bring them from A to B? They right. will be like, oh my gosh, I have a job. I am important. <laughs> I am so excited to carry all your gifts to my car. Like you have to be real and make sure you hand off those jobs, like your marriage license. Give that to your officiant, mm -hmm. like at the rehearsal dinner, perfect time to bring all those papers and hand them off so you don't have to deal with them, don't have to look for them, scatter nothing. Yeah, there are so there are so many little things like place cards, yes. menu cards, programs, engagement photos at the guest book table, yes. all those little things that you yourself have to get mm -hmm. uh, and you pick out and that's just... A matter of how it how it works out, but if you hand those off to personal attendants, or I'm a little biased, but if you have an event planner, 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 planner. you can <laughs> hand have them in boxes and hand them off to them in the morning of, and they can set all of that up for you. Check, check, check. Shout out to Ashley; she was our planner, and literally, <gasps> I didn't. I would just look at Ashley, and she would just know, and she'd be like, "Hey, stop that! Stop what you're doing." <laughs> <laughs> Like my Kept wedding party was like coming to me, what do we do? What do we do? And I was like, where's Ashley? I was like, don't ask me. Go find Ashley. And she was like, I got it. I got it. And I had no stress. So absolutely, if you don't have a planner, I highly, highly recommend it because it was just like, I'm not going to worry about anything because they're just going to take everything anyway. Yes. So I'm not worried. <laughs> it's it's a peace of mind that honestly, you guys, you can't put a price to. It's no. You just know you things can't. are taken care of and that's it's totally worth it. I promise. Yes. If you've got organized people and you trust them. By all means, mm -hmm. go for it. But, you know, there's just different ways to do everything. Yeah. Get a planner, get a planner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys took some great tips from us today to help with the week of the wedding. And like we said, it's, it's the stress is still going to be there. It's a matter of doing these things in order just to decrease it. And we're here, we're here to help you guys out. So thanks for tuning in. And we will uh, catch you at the next party. Yes. Woo woo. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Your Party People podcast. If you already love us, make sure to come back to the party every other Wednesday. If you really love us, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at It's Your Party People podcast. And make sure to let us know your thoughts on the show. And if you have any topics you want us to cover in a future episode, DM us on Instagram or email us at yourpartypeoplepodcast at gmail.com. And maybe we'll give you a shout out on the next episode. See you at the next party. Bye.